men up mentor and former Mongol mob chapter president, Toko Kopu. Uh, tēnā kōrua, you two, thank you. Hare mai welcome. Good. It's good to have Good you here. Kane, I wanted to tick off the tough stuff with you in a sec, but uh, Toko, can I ask you, did you used to be a very, very angry man? Very angry man, yes. A violent man? Violent man, yes, yes, I was saw all of that, and, uh, but there's a deeper issue uh, for that, you know, so the, the upbringing of uh, where I came from, my dad, it was a piece of dad, and then that's where it started, really, and then uh, got abused out of the home, uh, physically, and uh, just leaned off the street, how to survive, yeah. Okay, so I want to come back to you after I spoke to Kane and talk to you about why you aren't those things any longer, mm. okay, so yeah. thank you for putting that on the record, I really appreciate it. Kane, what the hell is your father-in-law playing at? I mean, if, if, if you're going to get into corrections facilities, and it's a tough question to ask you because you didn't say these words, but why would you threaten to provoke a riot? Why would you talk about a political gang rape in the context of being anti-violence? This is just reckless, isn't it? I can see uh, that's a length of time and the frustration of consultations that we haven't had the opportunity to actually have any proper talks with corrections, particularly uh, Minister Calvin Davis. Uh, he, he hasn't replied to any letters yeah, or... Yeah, look, I'm sorry to interrupt, yes. but isn't Man Up a movement about the ability to deal with frustration? In other words, if the man who inspired it and leads it, who is the figurehead leader, can't shut up and keep his cool when things aren't going his way, then what message does it send about the program? You know, the program speaks for itself. I mean, um, we we see the transformation of many lives. I mean, hundreds of lives around uh, New Zealand, particularly strong with Māori. It's really a it's a passion point, I think, uh, John. That uh, your that sort of is pressed in Bishop Brian Tamaki a passion point. It's not a frustration, more of a passion and a desire to want to see this transformation, particularly like with Tuku and many other typical men like Tuku, yeah. be transformed and changed and have a better life and a better future. I'm just going to interrupt you for a sec. Tuku, very quickly, did man up do good work for you? Very quickly. Did it oh, change? Most definitely. Okay, thank you. And I, I'm going to come back. I want to hear about that. That was a bit quick. <laughs> Kane, why did I hear Ange Jury on Checkpoint last night, who has done such outstanding work for Women's Refuge, say so she's nervous about yeah. the judgment of man up, uh, the kind of uh, toxic masculinity that you sometimes deal with? Why is she nervous about a program that Toko is telling us has changed his life? Yeah, we, uh, I definitely reached out to uh, Dr Ange Jury uh, recently. Uh, I thought it was a right and appropriate uh, after some media attention around uh, a negative report uh, that we had to deal with internally of a man making a, um, one of the man up men making a, a, an inappropriate comment. I'm going to tell you what the inappropriate comment was. Tell you what, Chick, if you provoke the man to smack your head in, it's your fault. Yeah, and John, we've, we've, we've dealt with that internally. Uh, we... How wrong was that? Oh, extremely wrong. Extremely wrong. And, and for us as, a, as an organisation, um, it was only right as a director to reach out to Dr. Ange Jury to say, look, Kanui to Kanui, could we please uh, sit down and talk? Because what, otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to get misinterpreted if we don't have the opportunity to actually sit down as an organisation so I can explain to her what the Kaupapa is actually about and give her the opportunity then to say, well, at least I've heard it from uh, the organisation itself. What do you do right, do you think? What we do right is that we give uh, we give men, families the opportunity to basically come to a place where they can actually start to deal with some of the deeper issues like Tuckle mentioned in the childhood, work through those things, yeah. not to become a victim in their future, but to actually have a have, have a life, have a better future. And I think that's what Man Up actually provides. It's it's a it's a safe place for men to come and talk. And and, and we need to have this discussion, don't we, Tuckle? Because our because colonised people never do well. And 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 we we're, and Māori in this country have a shorter life expectancy, lower socioeconomic position, lower health outcomes, and prisons. Half of our prison population, slightly more than, is is Māori people. So whatever the system is currently doing, it's not working. What was it about Man Up that worked for you? What worked for me was that uh, um, they got deep inside the core issues. They that they uh, uh, it was about opening up instead of hardening up. You couldn't do that in prison. All these courses that they give in uh, prison, you, you can do them uh, with other people because they all take advantage of that, uh, of opening up. And uh, so all the men that were in there doing the courses, they wanted to remain hard. And, and because of the atmosphere too of the, of the prison uh, lifestyle, but uh, uh, out 
here and we were able to open up. So, 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 so prisoners, essentially what you're saying, particularly if you've done violent crime, so you're in medium or max, it's survival of the first, right? It's guys being tough. Definitely. And then you're discharged back into the world, released back into the world, and you don't know anything other than how to be tough. I found that the prisons is just the breeding ground for, for gangs, so that's all, and, and for muncher men, and for people that they want to heal. Uh, that's why, hence the reason why the people are keep going back there. So, so, so you healed, you honestly, I, you honestly think man up was the turning point for you? Definitely, definitely. I don't even contemplate the criminal activities now. Um, uh, more in the courts now, helping people sit in the captive street, bring, bringing men out of the, uh, out of, um, uh, out of the prisons and into our uh, recovery homes. Okay. Were they Man Up members who were standing outside the El Noor Mosque in uh, Christchurch opposing the Muslim call to prayer, Cain? Were, were they members? Yeah, yeah. I believe they were, uh, John. I believe they were. Yay! Why would you do that? Because the they have to stand uh, <laughs> for, for their faith. I mean, look, we no, 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 because this is a conversation. Because when I listen to talk, Ooh. I think to myself, yep. this sounds great, and by golly, we need it. When I look at Brian Tamaki on Twitter and those <laughs> terrible men doing that say, outside the Almos Almo Mosque after 50 people had been killed, I think you guys have judgment issues sometimes. So, <clears> how can we trust you to always get it? Um, as Kimball, right as you I think you talk? just made a judgment. Okay, well, well, I want to turn that off. I'm actually not here to talk about. I'm here to actually no. talk about we've got a bigger issue. Look, we've got a rising prison population. We've got children that except, today except don't to, have except any to persuade parenting. me that man up are the people to deal with that bigger issue. Don't you have to persuade us all that your judgment is sound? Yeah, our judgment is sound. I mean, it's, it's time now to, I think it's really um, time now to have talks. Um, Calvin Davis, I mean, it's time now to talk. It's not time to uh, have these war, war of words. Um, we're actually really people that want to actually get on with the business, get on with the money. Uh, have an opportunity. Now, John, I had an opportunity to work in the Circo prison for seven months of free voluntary work, and that was that was that was that process was started by corrections itself. And after seven months, I was told to leave because of my association to the church. So, is that is that some type of discrimination of my faith and belief? Putting aside putting aside that the actual work that we can do for MANA is actually beneficial well, to top prisoners. One final question, because Toko is a, a living exemplar of the fact that it appears in his case to have been beneficial, right? Mm. So do you have to back the truck up, get Brian Tamaki to calm down, get people to stop standing uh, uh, angrily outside uh, mosques and, and, and try to get back in again calmly and rationally? I can't make I can't make the call for any other man. What I can say is that I would love the opportunity to sit with Calvin Davis or any other government official to actually talk about how we can actually start to make a, an impact yeah. on the prison the prison population, reducing that prison population, so that we can actually see what we believe seeing is men and women functioning back at where it belong uh, where the power is and back at home. Okay, Warren, Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time this morning. Good job.